Have you ever wanted to learn to cook but just didn't know where to start? Well, we're the guys from Sorted Food and we've teamed up with Co-op to create Now Cook It. A free online course to show you how to up your food game. So head over to Now Cook It to get started. But for now, check out this video from the course. Sausage carbonara, it's a twist on a classic and the only reason a classic becomes a classic is because it's super simple. Yeah, and that is exactly what this is. Perfect for midweek, a handful of ingredients and literally 10, 12 minutes, no more. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is get the pasta on because the time it takes to cook the pasta is the time it takes to get everything else ready. So a big pan of water. When you're boiling pasta, make sure you've got plenty of water and it has to be at a rolling boil. Rolling meaning lots of movement in the water. That stops all the strands from sticking together because of the movement. If you prefer, you can season the water with a little bit of salt and that seasons the pasta right the way through and saves you having to throw on seasoning at the end. And then, the spaghetti. Lower it in, make sure all the strands are completely submerged, not stuck together, so give it one swill, and then it will need about nine minutes of cooking, which is the time it takes to do everything else. And even now, you want to stick a lid back on to make sure it comes back up to that rolling boil. When it's rolling again, you can take the lid off. You don't want it to boil over, so just keep an eye on it. For the sauce itself, it starts with a couple of very, very simple ingredients. These might be kicking around in the fridge from another dish or a meal. If not, literally two sausages, two rashes of bacon. Easy. Well, I'm going to deal with the sausages. You're going to take two rashes of smoked streaky bacon, so it's got that smoky flavour, and just dice it up nice and fine. While you're doing that, I'm going to make sausage meatballs. So basically, sausages are fantastically seasoned meat inside of a skin. All you want to do is just squeeze meatball sized pieces out of the skin and they instantly form meatballs. You want about four per sausage. Now yes, there's two of us making this, one dicing the bacon and one making sausage balls, but you do one after the other, you've got plenty of time, a good three or four minutes to get your meatballs and dice bacon ready. With both meats prepared, they need to go into a frying pan over a pretty high heat with just about a tablespoon of oil. And what you want to do is cook and fry them for about three or four minutes to get good colour on them. In those three or four minutes, you can take one clove of garlic, crush it, and finely chop. The real key here is to get good colour on those sausage balls and bacon. That's where the flavour is, the browning. We've got our garlic chopped. We can now get rid of all the raw meat. So wipe down your board, wipe down your knives, and then we can make the sauce. Next up, we're talking about our sauce. Now, this sauce couldn't be any simpler. All it is, is one egg yolk and some Parmesan cheese. You're gonna need about a heat teaspoon of Parmesan cheese before it's grated. And then, after you've grated it, it's gonna look like a lot more. So all we need to do is separate our egg, crack it on there, and then just let the egg white pass between the two halves of the shell. And what that will leave you with it's just the egg yolk. Because our parmesan is quite salty, we don't need to season this with salt, but plenty of black pepper. And then just mix this up. At this point, when the bacon's nice and crispy and the sausage has got lots of colour, you can add in the garlic. If you add it in any earlier, it's gonna burn, because yeah. this pan's really hot. So as long as you're happy, that these sausage sort of... Meatballs. Gobules, meatballs, meatballs, meatballs. A cook. Just transfer one to a board and cut into it, just to check right in the middle. You're happy that it's cooked all the way through. If you are and there's no pink bits, then add in your garlic and take it off the heat. So the residual heat from the that pan is going to cook the garlic through. The pan is seriously hot. Nice. It's perfect. And now to test the pasta. So the sauce... I like this bit, this is a fun bit. <laughs> well, okay, there's a couple of ways of yeah. doing it. I know which way you want to do it. If you grab a strand, and as soon as you're happy that's cool enough to taste, just basically you should be able to press it between two fingers, and it will just break, but you should feel some resistance. Mm -hmm. That's one way of testing, or I know the test you're going to want to try. Well, this is the test that everyone's going to do at home. Take one strand of spaghetti, and yep. if it's cooked enough and there's enough starch come out of it, then it should stick if you throw it against a fridge, or a wall. Yes. Top tip, take it off the wall pretty quick or it sticks forever. It's going to be there in all the other videos we do now. <laughs> Drain the pasta into a colander over a bowl because you want to save that pasta water. The pasta water is key to getting an awesome carbonara sauce. So what you want to do is take the pasta and place it into your sausage, bacon and garlic mixture. And the pasta water, what you're going to do is take about a tablespoon of this boiling starchy water and add it to the egg. It does a couple of things. It loosens up the egg and cheese mixture mm -hmm. so you can get it all in the pan. 
But the starchy water also helps to thicken the sauce, plus it warms up the egg. If you put okay. the egg into a really hot pan, it will scramble. Of course. So this is called tempering, and you're just tempering that egg so that when you do add it to the pasta, it doesn't scramble. That's it, as simple nice. as that. We toss the whole thing together, a pair of tongs, or if you're confident, you can just toss it with a and bit that, of a wrist action. That doesn't look like much sauce. It doesn't need much, because the egg thickens, it all takes on those fantastic flavours mm -hmm. from the sausage meat and the bacon, and if you don't want it too claggy, because once that cools, by the time you get to yeah. the bottom of the bowl, it can be a bit claggy, you may need, and this will depend on the heat of your pan, maybe another tablespoon of that starchy water or two. What you're looking for, I'm sure you've all had carbonara when you've eaten out, is something that looks wonderfully creamy. No cream involved. And, that, and that's the traditional way of making it, isn't it? No yeah. cream, although it looks creamy. Look at that. Full of flavour, it's creamy, it's delicious, and you're using up Parmesan, egg, and any meat you might have in the fridge. And we're going to finish it with a fresh plume of basil. That is optional, but it makes all the difference, especially if you rip a little bit over as well as you eat it. There we go, everything you need to know to make an incredible sausage carbonara. There is never a good way to eat spaghetti, is there? There is a polite way, a twizzly around your fork way. You make sure you get yourself a Cumberland sausage or a sausage that's well spiced, because it makes oh. all the difference. Because those little meatballs, little cheap, but so good. And that only took the amount of time it took for the pasta to cook? Simple, if you're cooking Brilliant. for one, this is the way to do it. Easy enough to double up if you're cooking for two, mm -hmm. times by four with four people. It's just a really simple dish. If you want to give it a go, get the full recipe and details down below. And send us your pictures of you trying to eat the pasta without you know, making a mess.